furthest eastern round of the 2017 FIM Ice Speedway World Championship takes the riders outside of Russia for the first time this season. And to Kazakhstan's southern limit, Almaty returns to the calendar for a third consecutive season and marks the mid-campaign point for the 15 permanent gladiators. Fans flock to Shadrinsk for the first ever World Championship event in the Torpedo Stadium, the second event of the 2017 season. Dmitry Kometsevich and Dmitry Koltakov led the standings leaving Toliati after sharing honours at the opening round, but both lost ground to Igor Kononov in Shadrinsk. Reigning champion Kometsevich opened his account with a fall and non-scoring ride in Heat 1. he was floored again in his second outing, this time the innocent victim of an aggressive move from Dmitry Kultikov. <laughs> Comet Savage did well to pick himself up for three victories in his remaining programmed rides, inflicting a first defeat on eight times world champion Nikolai Krasnikov, who was straight back on form in his latest wildcard appearance. The sport's most successful rider of all time missed out on a place in the final after disqualification in the second semi-final for bringing down Sweden's Jimmy Olsen. And that paved the way for the only rider to have outscored Krasnikov in the heats, Igor Kononov, to become the third different winner of the campaign. Kononov and Krasnikov again topped the score charts during the heats on day two. Kononov suffering just two defeats in seven rides, the first of which was inflicted by Krasnikov in heat six. But Krasnikov was eliminated again at the semi-final stage as he was caught napping on the last two turns and Daniel Ivanov swept through for a damage limitation ride. The two-times world champion could only manage two race victories in 14 heats in Shadrinsk and dropped 16 points back from the championship lead. But with just three points dropped in 14 appearances and two successive meeting wins, the weekend belonged to Igor Kononov. While Dmitry Kometsevich and Dmitry Koltakov were quite literally fighting each other, Kononov picked up the pieces, moving to second in the series rankings and to within five points of leader Koltakov. The latest addition to the lineup for the third round of the season is Pavel Nekrasov, the third different wildcard in three years since the return of the Kazakhstan round. I was first involved in Ice Speedway as a spectator with my father, but I only took it up very late. First I took part in motocross, but there weren't many opportunities for me in that sport. And it was only in the mid-1990s that I finally took part in international Ice Speedway competition for the first time. That was the most successful era for the sport in Kazakhstan, when the team finished third in the 1995 and 1996 World Cup with Stanislav Kuchnikov and Vladimir Cheblakov. Success has dried up on the world stage for Kazakhstan, who dropped off the World Team Championship podium in 1997 and haven't featured among the contenders since. Subsequent new additions to their national team race regularly outside of Kazakhstan alongside veteran Vladimir Cheblakov in the hope of one day returning to the sports elite. The city of Almaty has a team in the Russian Major League, which is our chance to compete with the Russian riders. And after this weekend's World Championship event, we will return to Russia for the next two rounds of the league. But competing with the best riders in the world is very difficult, so it's very important for us to have this event here in Kazakhstan.
After two years as a reserve, now as a wild card, I finally have the opportunity to show my progress over the three years that we've had this event. Medeo Stadium provides a stunning backdrop for the Ice Speedway World Championship fight and at around 1,700 metres above sea level, altitude plays a significant role in the weekend's competition. The circuit itself is considered a classic venue in the series, having staged its first FIM event back in 1989. Stefan Svensson is the only rider to have competed in every world final in Almaty since then. With Jimmy Olsen withdrawn through injury in Shadrinsk, Denis Slepukin received a last-minute call-up to join the lineup alongside his fellow countryman Pavel Nekrasov, the nominated wildcard in Almaty. Around 6,000 fans were in attendance to watch the two days of competition, not put off by weather forecasts of heavy snow and thick fog. Daniel Ivanov already trailed the championship leaders by 16 points coming into the third round of the campaign. And despite a strong start to his opening race, his series was about to take a turn for the worse. Behind him, Harold Simon had got the better of Nicholas Svensson on the opening two turns. And the Swede was trying to find a way around the outside when Daniel Ivanov suffered a puncture coming off the second bend through the ruts and went down heavily in the path of the battle behind. Ivanov was withdrawn through injury, the crash likely to spell the end of his season, but Svensson returned bravely to the track for the restaging. That in itself was delayed after the impending fog finally arrived in Almaty, leaving visibility impossible for the riders. Thankfully that cleared up within an hour, giving way to snow and enabling the race to continue. Heat one, without Red collar, Ivanov. The rerun saw Harold Simon again burst in front of Nicholas Svensson, the Austrian taking his first race victory of the campaign and finally finding some form in Almaty after a tough start to the season with injury. Shadrinsk double winner Igor Kononov got off to a strong start in Heat 2, providing the last lap heroics in his battle with Dmitry Kometsevich with an inside burst to take the chequered flag. Behind them, Hans Weber struggled through his opening ride with mechanical problems, but still got the better of reserve call-up Denis Slepukin for the consolation points in Heat 2. Kononov's Heat 2 win had brought him to within two points of Dmitry Koltikov in the series overall, but the points leader took victory in his opening ride as well, restoring his five-point championship advantage. At the back, Jan Klotowski's disappointing season continued as he was comfortably beaten by Max Niedermeyer for the single point. The first two laps of Heat 4 provided the best action of the opening round of heats. Fast starting has been the key to Franz Zorn's success in 2017, and he bounced straight back to form after a challenging weekend in Shadrinsk. He was beaten in Heat 4, though, by Dina Valeev, the Russian working his way through from the back past Stefan Svensson on lap one, and then past Zorn a lap later. Gunter Bauer also passed the Swede to relegate him to the back, the two veterans occupying the minor places in their opening rides. Daniel Ivanov's Heat 1 fall gave the opening round scoring an unusual look, with Harold Simon unexpectedly at the top of the standings and Pavel Nekrasov scoring from his opening ride.
Igor Kononov maintained his winning run as he inflicted a first defeat of the day on Dinar Valev. Youngsters starting, letting him down throughout 2017 and once again in Almaty. Behind them, Vladimir Cheblikov came in as a reserve replacement for Daniel Ivanov and the veteran enjoyed a competitive ride against Jan Klotowski. Not one Kazakh rider was able to beat any of the permanent gladiators for outright pace during the weekend, but former world team medalist Cheblikov came the closest in Heat 5. Gunter Bauer moved into the provisional qualification positions with a victory in Heat 6, the first of four successes over the weekend for the veteran. The German moved level on points with Ove Ledström and Harold Simon, who came in behind him. Dmitry Koltakov was a class apart in Heat 7 that included two Kazakh riders. Stefan Svensson easily got the better of both Pavel Nekrasov and Denis Slepukin to take his first points of the day. Nicholas Svensson, meanwhile, had a tougher time in his round two heat. Behind the leaders, Comet Savic and Zorn, the youngster was fending off Max Niedermeyer when he came to grief around turns one and two on the second lap. A second fall in two rides for the Swede, who was withdrawn for a knee injury. Max Niedermeyer returned to the track to complete his remaining heat programme. After two rounds of heat, a two-point buffer had opened between the top eight and the chasing pack. Stefan Svensson, the only rider outside of the provisional qualification positions, really expected to challenge. challenging season for Hans Weber continued with a mechanical retirement on the start line that gifted a first point of the day to Vladimir Cheblikov in Heat 9. Ahead Dmitry Koltakov got the better of Franz Zorn to maintain his unbeaten run. Igor Kononov remained level with Koltakov in the day standings with a third consecutive victory to match his championship rival. Harold Simon provided further proof that he's back to his best as he got the better of Stefan Svensson for second and moved one step closer to the semi-finals on six. Meanwhile, Max Niedermeyer suffered his only non-scoring ride on what was a solid day for the German. Heat 11 followed the form book. Dmitry Kometsevich taking advantage of an inside start position for an easy win. Gunter Bauer comfortably getting the better of Jan Klotowski and Pavel Nekrasov for seconds. After a six heat gap between rides, Dina Valeyev returned to the inside start position for a second victory of the day. Heats were generally well spread out in Almaty. The Russians comfortably faster than the Europeans, who in turn had the measure of the three local riders. Vladimir Cheblikov won the battle for local pride by beating wildcard Denis Slepukin for third. After three completed rounds of heats, the point situation was starting to look fairly clear cut. Four European riders tied on six points apiece sat three points clear of Stefan Svensson outside of the qualification zone and only a swift recovery from the Swede could change the destination of the semi-final places.
Vladimir Cheblakov and Denis Slepukin both took back-to-back -back rides in a wreck work of the reserve system, and it was the second reserve who once again got the better of the first. The race for national pride between Max Niedermeyer and Gunter Bauer at the front was decided on the opening lap, Bauer taking his second win and moving on to his best score of the season. The strongest lineup in the heats produced a chaotic opening lap as Dmitry Kultikov passed reigning champion Dmitry Kometsevic to maintain his unbeaten run and increase Kometsevic's deficit to the top of the standings. Harold Simon outtrapped Dina Valev but was quickly overhauled by the third Russian in the heat for the single point. Unbeaten Kolonov and Kultikov weren't set to meet until heat 20 and Kolonov had the easier of the rides in round four as he maintained his maximum hopes. Kolonov had to work hard on the opening lap from the outside gate to get the better of Franz Zorn, but heat 15 was straightforward from there. Stefan Svensson finally got his challenge for the semi-finals up and running with victory in heat 16 after a steady start to the meeting. The veteran Swede passed Hans Weber for the lead on the opening lap but the German held on for his best score of the day in second, Jan Klotowski. The only major change in the leaderboard in round four of the heat saw Harold Simon drop back with an on-scoring outing, bringing Stefan Svensson back into contention. Top six by now were already guaranteed places in the semi-final stage. Ove Ledstrom was fortunate not to be disqualified for seemingly exceeding track limits on the opening bends of Heat 17 but he recovered well from his lap one wobble to guarantee a place in the day's top eight scorers. Crucial last lap move on Stefan Svensson moved Ledstrom onto nine points, at the same time putting the veteran in danger of elimination on seven. Harold Simon was the only rider left in a realistic position to overhaul Svensson, the Austrian needing second place from Heat 18, which he took with some comfort. Meanwhile, Denis Slepukin's sequence of scoreless rides continued with a Heat 18 mechanical retirement. Max Niedermeyer moved on to his best score of the season with second place in Heat 19, getting the better of fellow countryman Hans Weber for the two race points behind Dina Valeev. The much-anticipated Heat 20 put the two previously unbeaten riders, the top two in the championship, up against one another for the first time in Almaty. Igor Kononov had the inside start position and that proved decisive as he stuck to his own line and swept past Dmitry Koltakov's inside attacks. Kotskov looked to have got the move done on lap three, but Kononov's bravery was rewarded with a fifth successive win and top spot in the heat standings. Heat 20 proved decisive in determining the meeting winner when the fog returned before the semi-finals, forcing the referee to abandon the remaining three races. The podium positions were pretty clear-cut, Dmitry Koltakov beaten just once by Igor Kononov and getting the better of Dmitry Kometsevich behind him in the fourth round of the heats. But the abandonment was a shame for Harold Simon, who missed out on a first opportunity to tackle the semi-finals in 2017. A third successive meeting victory was confirmed for Igor Kononov, 
The table with an unusual look with just four Russians in the top eight compared with six in the previous rounds. Vladimir Cheblakov was the best placed Kazakh rider with 13th. Today was a difficult meeting with the weather conditions and so on. Now I'm very tired. Of course, the others have more points than me, but I have an opportunity tomorrow to score more and try to win the final. Today was very close because Igor Kononov and I were level on points all the way through the heat. And then in heat 20 I was trying my best but just fell short. It was also a real challenge because of some health problems, but hopefully I will feel better tomorrow. In the opening round of the season I was a bit disappointed, but I always do my best, and that has worked for me today, even though it was difficult. Настраиваюсь всегда на борьбу, на победу до конца, ну не всегда это получается, но в Казахстане мне благоволит. With two point scoring opportunities missed due to the early abandonment of the meeting, points games were generally narrow on the opening day in Almaty. Igor Kononov's Heat 20 win over Dmitry Kolskov gained him one point in the series overall. Dmitry Kometsevich dropped one point further back. But after exactly half of the completed rounds, the momentum was with Igor Kononov following his third consecutive victory. In the FIM Ice Speedway World Championships 51-year history, competitors and their teams of mechanics have continued to drive forward technical innovation within the sport. This has resulted in a series of customised prototypes being used at every Ice Speedway event has helped to ensure the competition's uniqueness. Ice Speedway bikes are very different from any other machines. Firstly, they only have two gears. We do the start in first gear, and then after a few meters we kick into second gear and stay in that for the rest of the heat. The clutch is one of the most important parts of the bike, because a good start is so important. It's a dry clutch which we can adjust manually. These bikes have a longer wheelbase than many other bikes. We measure from the center of the front wheel to the center of the back wheel. We also bring down the front suspension and raise the rear suspension to get the bike through the corners, depending on the track. And because of our suspension, we need a much more rigid frame than a standard speedway bike which is what makes our bikes look much stronger. What surprises people the most is that the bikes do not have any brakes, which is mainly just to keep down the weight. Many of an ice speedway bike's unique attributes are a direct adaptation to the conditions, the spikes and protection against them for when it all goes wrong. An ice speedway bike has custom prepared tyres, which is a minimum to get grip on an ice surface. These tyres were made by my father and I, drilling out holes and putting in the spikes by hand. That's definitely the most time consuming thing in the sport. The protection over the front and back wheels is the one thing that has changed the most in the history of the sport. So we have a steel compound inside and then a plastic outside, which is designed to protect you from punctures from the tyres. This plastic cover protects some of the most important parts of the bike, such as the carburetor, back suspension and ignition. When we're in the pits, we take this cover off to reach the parts and check on the bike. So now I have shown you all of the parts that we work with that make Ice Speedway so unique and that help to give us our speed. Although snow continued to fall heavily in Almaty, the fog that had engulfed the circuit and forced early abandonment on the opening day had abated by the time fans and riders returned to the circuit for day two. 
after Daniel Ivanov's opening day withdrawal and with just four Russians now competing in the series, the chances of an upset from the European riders had increased significantly. Firstly, I'm very sorry for Daniel, who's a great sportsman and I wish him a speedy recovery. But one Russian more or less doesn't make too big a difference, my targets are the same. We aim to make the semi-final and with a bit of luck progress to the final. The altitude is very difficult, but it is quite similar to Austria, where I have experienced it many times. The heavy snow, the fog, but that's part of racing in ice speedway and part of having a good weekend here. It was quite a good day for us yesterday, particularly at the start, when I wasn't too far away from the Russians. It was a shame about the fog and cancellation, because I think I would have done well in the finals. But a good result after Shadrinsk, where I was very sick, and now I have a much better feeling again. Although Daniel Ivanov was withdrawn through injury sustained on the first day, the former world champion remained in the paddock to watch on and his fellow countrymen continued their pursuit of the crown. Just one change to the lineup for the second day. Vladimir Cheblakov coming in to replace Ivanov. The opening heat of the day followed form, with Dmitry Kometsevich making the start on Ove Ledstrom and blocking the Swede on the opening two turns. The youngster held second ahead of Hans Weber and Pavel Nekrasov. Heat 2 provided a close contest, particularly on the second and third laps. After enjoying a strong opening day score, Max Niedermeyer challenged on the tail of Stefan Svensson before the veteran found an extra burst of speed and left the German behind. Once released, Svensson was able to gain ground off Franz Zorn, but was unable to find any way through. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the back, Nicholas Svensson struggled with a knee injury from the opening day and fell, again forcing his withdrawal from the meeting. Gunter Bauer returned to winning ways in the biggest upset of the day in Heat 3, the German getting the better of Dina Valeev. Harold Simon had made the initial jump from the inside gate and while Valeev pursued around the outside, Bauer took advantage to pass the pair in one brilliant move. When Valeev finally did get past Simon, he cut forcefully to the inside and the Austrian went down heavily over his rival's back wheel. Simon thankfully was able to get back up to his feet but was disqualified from the restaging. Most would have predicted an entirely different outcome at the second time of asking, but Dina Valeev was caught out by an error in the starting procedure and Bauer streaked away to the win. Igor Kononov moved his winning streak against Dmitry Koltakov on to seven successive victories, gaining a point on Koltakov in the process and narrowing the gap at the top of the championship to just three. Vladimir Cheblakov took advantage of Harold Simmons' disqualification to become the first Kazakh rider in the points on day two. Stefan Svensson was the only rider not to make the top eight on day one to sit in the provisional qualification positions after the opening round of heats. With Nicholas Svensson withdrawn and the reserve riders already called into the meeting to replace Jimmy Olsen and Daniel Ivanov, four of the remaining heats were ridden with three gladiators only. 
That made more room on the first turn for the rider off the outside gate in Heat 5, Gunter Bauer, who duly swept across Jan Klotowski and onto the win. Franz Zorn joined Bauer at the top of the standings as he maintained his maximum run. Both riders taking opening victories from the two outside positions. Zorn was hardly troubled by fellow countryman Harold Simon, who had his hands full with an outside challenge from Hans Weber in the early laps. After dispatching Dmitry Koltakov successfully in Heat 4, Igor Kononov beat the other of his main championship rivals, Dmitry Kometsevich, in his second outing. Kometsevich made the start from the outside gate, but his momentum carried him past the turn, and Kononov pounced. Ove Ledstrom and Stefan Svensson provided the best entertainment of the second round in their race for third in Heat 8. Svensson held the position initially, but a good move into the final lap from Ove Ledstrom got him alongside the veteran, and he finally dispatched his fellow countrymen in the closing stages by maintaining his inside run. Franz Zorn had yet to meet a Russian rider, and Gunter Bauer had successfully dispatched Dina Valeyev, enabling both to remain unbeaten after the opening two rounds, and alongside Igor Kononov up front on six. A closer fight for the last of the top eight positions on the second day was in prospect. Heat 9 provided two races in one, with Franz Zorn struggling to match Dmitry Koltakov up front, while Vladimir Cheblakov got the better of Pavel Nekrasov at the back. The closest Nekrasov got was an inside challenge at the end of the opening lap. After two opening victories against his strongest opposition, Igor Kononov only had one more Russian rider to face in his remaining heat programme, Dina Valeyev in Heat 10. Behind their battle up front, Hans Weber took the inevitable single point in the second three-rider race. After a non-scoring opening day, Denis Slepukin suffered a third consecutive scoreless ride after a tapes infringement and disqualification in Heat 11. Meanwhile, with Igor Kotlinov still unbeaten after his Heat 10 success, the remaining races were about damage limitation and seemingly the battle for seeding position to the semi-finals between Dmitry Kometsevich and Dmitry Koltakov. Comet Savic had no great problems in Heat 11 and the race was behind him when Gunter Bauer and Stefan Svensson duelled over second. Bauer had got off to the strongest start in the meeting and to the Heat. The Swede made a significant step towards the semi-finals with a last lap overtake for the two race points. Ove Ledstrom matched his fellow countryman's five-point score with a win in Heat 12. The Swede doing well to recover from a first-turn error and take the lead around the outside of the top bend. Even with second place gained at the expense of Max Niedermeyer, Harold Simon was left with a lot of work to do in his two challenging remaining rides to recover from a non-scoring opening outing. Gunter Bauer's defeat at the hands of Stefan Svensson dropped him behind Franz Zorn, who also slipped back from the leading pace at the expense of Dmitry Koltakov. Harold Simon remained a point behind the provisional qualification positions, directly behind Ove Ledstrom, who had beaten him in Heat 12. Three of the riders for Heat 13 had just four points between them coming into round four, so it was no great surprise that Dino Valeyev was able to pick up his first race victory of the day in their company. Still, there was some entertainment provided by the evenly matched Pavel Nekrasov and Denis Slepukin. Hardly inspiring fare, but a local duel for the spectators and a second point on the board for Nekrasov. 
The wildcard had made an error at the end of lap two that enabled the first reserve through and then swept back around the outside to take the position and the single point. After his excellent effort against Gunter Bauer in Heat 11, Stefan Svensson took his first race victory in Heat 14. The race matched the weakest of the Europeans against the strongest of the Kazakhs, but just as on day one, Vladimir Cheblakov missed out against Jan Klotowski. Dmitry Komitsevich had the perfect view of the man he replaced as world champion last year. Dmitry Koltskov capturing the provisional meeting lead with victory in Heat 15. Three rider race meant another point on the board for Harold Simon. Igor Kolonov, though, had a ride in hand over Koltakov and set about converting it in what turned out to be one of the best heats of the day. On the opening lap, Kolonov passed Gunter Bauer for the lead, but Franz Zorn upset the pair's battle with an inside pass on lap two and hit the front. With Bauer now safely dispatched, Kolonov went off in pursuit of race leader Zorn, only successfully completing the pass when the Austrian made a final lap error. Zorn had got closer than anyone else to inflicting a first defeat of the weekend on the unbeaten Igor Kononov. All but one of the provisional qualification positions now look decided with four riders on five points apiece vying for the final place. Ove Ledstrom led them on countback and looked to have by far the easiest of the round five heats, a three rider race against two local representatives. Ove Ledstrom then had no room for error in heat 17 but didn't put a foot wrong as he took the expected race victory to secure his place in the semi-final stages. Behind him, Vladimir Cheblakov became the highest scoring Kazakh for a second day in succession. The semi-finalists were now decided, but the remaining three heats still provided some entertainment. But Tabauer moved on to a double-figure score for the second day in succession by getting the better of Hans Weber, whose third-place finish gave him a season's best total of six. A perfect cutback on the opening lap gave Dinar Valeyev, Heat 19, his second win in succession. Dmitry Kometsevich can ill afford to drop points to riders outside of the championship battle and he now sat nine points back from the series leader. Behind him, Jan Klotowski briefly challenged Franz Zorn on the opening lap, but the Austrian held on for third. Igor Kononov completed a five-ride heat maximum and the main story of Heat 20 was behind him and the race for second. Stefan Svensson took the position and moved on to a creditable 10-point score. Harold Simon missing out and eventually retiring, gifting an extra point to Pavel Nekrasov. Seven riders finishing on double-figure scores demonstrated a lack of depth to the field in the absence of Olsen, Svensson and Ivanov, and the semi-finalists were clear-cut. Hans Weber enjoyed his best result of the campaign with ninth, as he got the better of both Max Niedermeyer and Harold Simon. The stronger of the two semi-finals features four double-figure scorers, including two of the top three in the 2017 Championship, the favourites to progress. Igor Kononov goes off the inside start position in red, top scorer in the heats, unbeaten so far this weekend. 
Alongside him, Dimitri Comet Savage, one of only two riders to have made it into the final at every round this season. He'll be expected to do so again here. Gate three in white, Gunter Bauer. Two impressive race victories in his first two rides. The German has dropped off a little since then. And the outside gate is with Stefan Svensson in only his second semi-final of the season, looking far stronger today than yesterday. On paper, at least two races in one here with the two championship contenders off the inside gates and the two Europeans on the outside waiting for mistakes from the favourites. Kononov, Comet Savage, Bauer and Svensson for semi-final one which gets underway with a good break off the outside from Svensson, but it's the two Russians who get there first. Comet Savage on the outside and Kononov trying to find his way through on the inside. Bauer doing the same at the back in the battle against Stefan Svensson, takes the inside route and comes through into third place. So the end of the opening lap, it's Kononov in front from Comet Savage in second, Bauer in third and Svensson out at the back. Things going as per the form book. The previously unbeaten Igor Kononov leading the way, but coming under pressure now from Dmitry Kometsevich, who bundles his way through down the inside into turn number three. And Kononov sticking to his favoured outside line in the early stages has found his challenge undone there. Although he's fighting back on the inside now of Dmitry Kometsevich. Separate battle at the back. Stefan Svensson gets the better of Gunter Bauer, who drops out of proceedings. And it's going to be Stefan Svensson who will score the single point, but no great surprises about the two riders who will progress. It's Comet Savage and Kononov marching through. Kononov down the inside of Comet Savage, who bobbles wide on the second bend. And Kononov looks set to maintain his maximum run as he fires through to the front on the final lap and takes the checkered flag, but only just. Comet Savage close in the run down to the line, takes second. Stefan Svensson taking the consolation point for his best result of the season in third in semi-final one. Well, the opening semi-final certainly followed the form book. The second, on the other hand, should be more open. The inside gate with Dmitry Koltakov, a clear favourite for this semi-final, only beaten by Igor Kononov during the heats. Alongside him, Dina Valeev, two wins in succession, both from gate two. You would expect him to progress from the same starting position here. The outside start positions, Fran Zorn in white, a track specialist who made the podium here in 2015. And Ove Ledstrom, three times a semi-finalist last season, making his first top eight appearance of the campaign here today. Watch for the race for second then, with only the top two moving through. Zorn has already once pulled off a surprise to make the final this season. Koltakov on one, Valeev off two, Zorn off three, and Ledstrom off the outside for semi-final two. The revs pick up and the riders are away. Good start off gate three from Franz Zorn. It's Franz Zorn who takes the whole shot, but moving in wide now, Dmitry Koltakov. And as he does so, it's Dina Valeev who pops through on the inside with a perfect cutback off the second turn. So the Russians are in positions one and two. Valeev though out of shape at the end of the opening lap, clatters into the front of Dmitry Koltakov who shakes his head in frustration. Koltakov though needs to calm it down now. He still sits inside the qualification positions. He lunges for the inside on Valeev and should make the pass at the half race distance and does so aggressively coming off turn four. Koltakov perhaps showing his frustrations a little there and Valeev almost off the back of the bike around turns one and two. Had such a margin in hand over Franz Zorn that he still holds on from the Austrian who lunges for the inside now into turn three and runs Valeev right up to the fence. Has the youngster got any answers to try and repay the compliment? Second and third positions, of course, particularly crucial. The last qualification position now held by Franz Zorn. After a series of errors from Dino Valeev, the youngster made the start and should really have booked his place in the final. But instead, he's going to miss out with another major scout from Franz Zorn, who takes his second final appearance in 2017 with a runner-up position in the second semi-final. On to the final. The favourites here have dropped just two points between them all weekend. Igor Kononov bidding for a fourth consecutive meeting win that would move him closer to championship leader Koltakov. He currently sits three points down. Dmitry Koltakov only beaten twice all weekend, but on both occasions by Igor Kononov. He goes off gate two. Gate three in white, it's Dmitry Kometsevich, the winner in Totliati. He's only dropped back since then. Franz Zorn, the outsider, completing the lineup. The Austrian beat both Kononov and Komet Savic to make the podium here in 2015. It'll be tough for the Austrian to break the established top three again here. So the top three in the championship go head to head for the fourth time this season. And the battle between Kononov and Koltakov is just starting to look like the race for the title as well. As Komet Savic begins to lag behind 
This is a great opportunity for him to get back in control of the defense of his crown. Kononov, Koltakov, Kometsevic and Zorn for the first and only final of the weekend here in Almaty. Good start off gates one and three. It's Kononov who gets there first. Comet save it straight up to the outside. Koltakov has the momentum in the battle for second and presses his advantage home down into turn three, down the inside, and then moves wider to block Comet Savic. Really aggressive manoeuvre on turn four, just as he did to Dina Valeyev previously in the semi-final stage. Dmitry Koltakov has fought his way into second. He's got a big deficit though to Igor Kononov. Has he got time to make it up? Dmitry Kometsevich was a little bit lacklustre around turns one and two last lap around and he's now dropped well back, leaving the front two in the race for top spot here in Almaty. Which, as I said previously, is starting to look like the championship battle as well. Igor Kononov leading the way against Dmitry Koltakov. Koltakov who really needs to start finding some form from the tapes in 2017 because Kononov has been electric from the tracks in recent rounds. The gap has narrowed to less than a bike length into the final two turns. Koltakov looks to the inside, but it's going to be Igor Kononov who takes the chequered flag for a fourth successive victory in 2017 and to further narrow the championship deficit to just two points going into the final two rounds of the campaign. Victory for Igor Kononov and an unbeaten run as well in Almaty. That is absolutely incredible and reminiscent of some of the best performances we've seen in the Ice Speedway World Championship in years gone by as well. A bumper scoring day for the European riders also with only four Russian riders compared to six in the previous rounds. It is though hard to look past Kolonov, Koltakov and Komet Savic locking out the podium in the remaining finals of 2017. I'm very disappointed to have lost a lot of points this weekend. Again, there was almost a crash with Dmitry Koltakov, and I'm a bit sad about that. But hopefully the remaining rounds in Europe will be more successful for me. I really tried my best, but unfortunately I just lost that battle with Igor. My bike wasn't quite right in the final and I'm still not feeling 100%. But anyway, I'm happy because I'm still the championship leader and I have two points in hand over Igor. And I'm looking forward to the remaining rounds in Germany and the Netherlands. Today everything works perfectly. I had the right setup. And I'm so pleased everything finished like this. Igor Kononov completes an incredible maximum weekend and takes a fourth successive victory. After an underwhelming opening round in Toliati, it's taken four subsequent meetings to make up the points deficit. But if he can now keep up that momentum as the series travels back to Western Europe, he will certainly take some stopping.